In this video, I'm going to help you learn how to create a musical with your kids at the elementary or maybe the middle school or maybe the high school level. There are some basic steps you need to begin with. You're probably thinking about, all right, I've got the musical, then I need costumes, and I need staging, and I need characters, and all of that, or actors, whichever. Before that, we need to create what they're going to sing, what the kids are going to sing and say, if there needs to be dialogue. The basic steps to creating a musical, at least the first four, are these. Select a story, divide it into sections, create poetry lyrics, and then from that create the melody, and then the melody will determine harmony and other choices. Those are the basic steps. Let's dive into them. Using the three bears as an example, let's say there are three sections two Goldilocks and the three bears. There could be different, the more or less, whichever, let's just say there's three for the sake of argument. There's the opening where the, we're introduced to the bears and then there's Goldilocks. She stumbles onto the bear's house and she does her whatever she does and then the bears come back and then Goldilocks runs away. All right, as you can see here on this slide, we have the opening, each bear is introduced, there, there might be a little song et with all three of them. It could be three verses of the same song with different lyrics. Keep it simple, right? Then Goldilocks does her little song with chairs and porridge in bed and then the bears come home. So those are the sections. Now. When we're writing lyrics, we want to make sure that the kids understand that everybody knows the story, so we don't have to repeat the story for the audience. Unless the book calls for it, it could be a book that has, that's in verse and it lends itself to repeating or reciting, okay? One, in particular is Giraffes Can't Dance. I don't recall the author. It's in verse. Giraffes Can't Dance is in verse. Saying the poem kind of lends itself to a, saying the, the book, reciting the book, reading the book, let's just say reading the book, lends itself to a dramatic reading and drama itself. Okay. So if the audience already knows what's going on, they don't need a song about the same thing. Kids are good about just rehashing the same words with different words or the same ideas with different words. And one of the things that helps is to get them to understand this idea of recitative and aria in opera and then dialogue and song in a musical. Dialogue is important because you get a lot of information in a very short amount of time. Recitative is a lot of information in a short amount of time. Arias and songs, they talk about the emotional aspects of what's going on. They might provide background information you're not getting from the story, a lot of different things. Recitative and aria. Drama, action, and reflection. It's really important kids know the difference so that you can guide them, even via a distance. Oop, back up one, up, nope, up, nope, up, right there, ah, here it is. All right. So get the kids into groups, or you could have them do it individually, online, or whichever you're going to do, and jot down, jot down some words. It's just brainstorming, okay? You, you have a scene, uh, Goldilocks and the Three Bears. Let's say we're gonna have a bear. Uh, one verse of a song is gonna be the Papa Bear, the Mama Bear, and the Baby Bear. So the Papa Bear, what's he like? I mean, it's a day. What are they going to do? What's he going to do? 
the baby bear, what's the baby bear going to do? It's, you know, it's morning. They have porridge. They wake up, they're doing their thing. So you might ask the kids using this example, what do you think they're thinking about for the rest of the day? You know, planning. And then those lyrics are going to um, inform the audience's understanding of the papa bear, mama bear, baby bear, blah, 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 blah. So they go on and then um, jot down some words or some short sentences, nothing, you know, over the top about Goldilocks. Um, what is she thinking about when she's on these, uh, the porridge and the chair and the bed? Same idea. Lots of adjectives, uh, lots of uh, metaphor, this is like that, or, you know, simile, all that kind of stuff onomatopoeia, all those things where your uh, alliteration, where you're trying to make it a little more poetic, right? Right? Feelings, how do the characters relate to one another, as I say here. So the assignment is this. Each child writes three sentences, three three-word sentences, just short little things, just to give you some ideas, or 20 words, just jot down 20 words. You're going to get a lot of stuff. Some of them will be, you know, not even out in left field. They will be in a hockey rink. Okay? So that's what they give you. And then from that, you're going to create the lyrics and make sure that the lyrics um, have some sort of uh, metrical structure. I'm sure you're going to do that anyway. Uh, it has a flow. They're probably going to be two, four, eight bar phrases so that it, it lines up metrically and squarely, right? Everything has to be the same length so that kids can predict when that next thing is going to happen. Remember, simple to complex. Don't overthink this. The next thing, if it will... Oh, I didn't mention that, but from the kids' ideas, you're going to create these lyrics. Okay, got that. All right, now moving on. Okay, now you've got the lyrics. Now we have to do uh, the rhythm. We're creating a melody, and it's a rhythm. Now, you can do it this way. Some kids need this. Just say the words in a rhythm, like a poem, like a chant. And then once that's under their belt, you give them the opportunity to sing a song. Some kids can do both at once, okay? If they can do both at once, then hey, let them have it. And you're going to have kids in your room, in your uh, studio, whichever, that are going to be able to do this without thinking. And some kids aren't going to be able to do it at all. And that's okay because that's life. So. Give them uh, a rhythmic, the rhythmic movement of the lyrics. You can pre, you can say, okay, I'm, you know, you're recording stuff for kids to do, right, right, to listen to. So it could be that you're giving them the rhythm to these songs of lyrics you've uh, created, so that they can learn the rhythm of these new words, right? The other way is to allow the kids to come up with their own chant. And depending on who you are, where you are, how comfortable you are with technology, the kids could send you audio files of themselves chanting. And that would, for me, would be preferable, but it may not work for you because you're, you're not there. Okay? If the kids can do the work and you can take the kids' work and do something with it, that's the way to go, okay? The next thing is creating melody two, as I say here, is, is actually not the rhythm, but the, the notes themselves, the up and downs. Depending on what you are planning to do, well, let's come down here. The question is, when you give this performance, is it going to be with kids playing instruments, or is it going to be a click track? All right. If there are kids playing instruments, the instruments are going to be the weak link, okay? 
Singing is going to be a lot easier than playing instruments because singing is something that kids do. Even though they may not like to sing, they do that all the time. Playing an instrument is going to be tough. So you'll want to give them, the kids, a harmonic ostinato to sing to. I mean, it's like a simple chord progression on a guitar or ukulele, but a bourdon. It could be D-A-C-G, D-A-C-G, D-A-C-G. And you can come up with your own. Make sure that the pattern is multiples of 2, 4, 8, 16. So it's square music and everybody knows when that next downbeat's going to be, okay? Provide them a simple ostinato or it could just be one chord. It doesn't matter. The parents will love it anyway. Or you could do the second option is anything goes. Just leave it up to the kids and have them submit their melodies uh, via an audio file if they can do that, if they have the technology. The last way, it's kind of a middle ground, is provide an antecedent. Let's say that the melody is um, in 6 8. So um, Goldilocks was. Goldilocks was on her way to school when she saw. Goldilocks was on her way to school. And then going on. Goldilocks was on her way to school. And then the rest of the line. You're providing that ba da bum bum be da bum 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 for the kids. And the kids are going to come up with something else. So you get them going, and then they're doing the rest of the work, okay? So provide the harmonic structure, open-ended, provide the antecedent. Basically, that's what you do. Divide and conquer, divide and conquer, section, well, story, divide and conquer, brainstorm, lyrics, Rhythm of lyrics, melody of lyrics, right? And I didn't mention it before, so I'll mention it now. If it's open-ended, right? If you're just letting the kids do their thing, and there's kids in your school right now who can do this easily. You're not going to be able to predict exactly what the um, harmonic progression is going to be. And that's the only downside, is you're not going to know necessarily. You're going to get a melody, and depending on how the child sings, it's going to be a definite 5-1 uh, in major or 5-1 in minor. It might not. So there's some nebulous stuff going on there. You're just going to have to work through that. Okay? So... Those are my initial thoughts, and I will provide more very soon. Take care, and remember, this is the best day ever to make music.